Just like the church down the street that's been under construction for well over a decade, I have a pile of games I've started but never finished. Some of these games are all-time classics, others are all-time unknowns. The reasons I haven't gotten around to finishing them range widely, from time constraints to general disinterest. I've recently been focusing on these games because I thought at one point they were good enough to buy and start. Maybe there's something there that I was missing. I'm going to go through a few of these games and try to explain why I decided to put them down. This one's bizarre. I love Mario games. From the original Super Mario Bros. on the NES to Mario Odyssey on the Switch, I generally like Mario games. I've gone over this before, but I completely skipped over the N64. My family chose to get a PlayStation, which meant that I wasn't going to get any of the N64 games. I did play a few of them at my cousin's house, like Star Fox 64 and Super Smash Bros., but only a handful of times. My first encounter with Super Mario 64 was at a kiosk. It blew my mind. I knew while playing it that I was missing out big time. The PlayStation didn't have anything like it, at least I didn't know of anything comparable. Crash Bandicoot is great, but it's no Mario 64. I didn't get a chance to play it again until it was released on the Wii Virtual Console. I downloaded and played it for a little while, then didn't pick it up again. Maybe it was because the controller I used to play it wasn't ideal, but I just couldn't get into it. The same thing happened when it was released on the Wii U Virtual Console. I started it, played it for a while, turned it off, and never went back. I know the legacy and appeal of the game, I just haven't been able to get into it. I thought I would finally focus on playing it on the Mario 3D All-Stars collection, but just like the past two times I tried, I started it and put it down. Recently I've had the itch to play N64 games, and that desire has been ramping up quite a bit. It's probably because of all the talk around the Switch's online expansion pack. I'm really wanting to play some of these iconic games. It's just a matter of time before I give Mario 64 a serious playthrough. Two games I absolutely love are Donkey Kong Country and Donkey Kong Country 2 on the Super Nintendo. I've played through them more times than I can remember. They are the absolute pinnacle of 2D platforming. The level designs are phenomenal, and the controls are the best I've ever felt on a platformer. I play through both a few times a year. I really like these games. However, the third game? I don't have much of an opinion about it. I haven't ever really played it. I've started it numerous times. I own the Super Nintendo and Game Boy Advance cartridges. One would think that I had played through it multiple times, but the fact is, I don't really have the desire to play it, and I don't know why. It has everything the other two games have, great music, superb level designs, and amazing controls. Though the music in the first level really isn't to my liking, maybe this is why I haven't immersed myself into it. The characters have also changed. Dixie makes a comeback, which is awesome, but instead of Diddy or Donkey Kong, Kitty Kong joins the adventure. He's Dixie's baby cousin. I have nothing against Kitty, he actually feels similar to Donkey Kong, so he's not the problem. I don't know why I'm not interested in this game. I've started it many times and even tried playing it when it was released in the Wii Virtual Console. I just never took hold of it like I have the other two games. I know one day I'll pick this game up and it will click with me. Some regard it as the best in the series, others think it's the worst. I'm really compelled to find out where I sit with it. There was a time when you couldn't talk about gaming without someone bringing up Celeste. It was everywhere. At times I don't give in to the hype. I actually try to avoid it. Sometimes I'll wait it out because I'm a little stubborn. After hearing about it constantly, I decided to give it a try. I ended up finding a physical limited run copy at Best Buy. But like a true collector, I kept the plastic wrap on it and I bought it digitally while it was on sale for some dumb reason. Celeste is really good. I like the game mechanics and level designs. It made me think about my approach to each set piece, in contrast to other games where I run ahead without any thought. I only played it for a short time. I admit that I didn't really give it much of a chance before I put it down. It just seems like today, my time is so limited. If a game doesn't intrigue me early on, I'm probably not going to push through to see if it eventually does. I've heard that the story is amazing, which makes me want to jump back into it. Other than that, I don't really know anything about it. It also came out when I really didn't pay attention to indie games. I've changed my thinking now. Indie games are awesome, and I can't believe I once thought that they were inferior to first party releases. I have fully reversed my thinking. I should probably give Celeste another try sometime soon. I've bought Bioshock Infinite more times and never finished it than any other game in my life. I absolutely love the first Bioshock. 
It completely took over my life during my first playthrough. The story and world are amazing. It was unlike anything I had ever played before. I've gone back and played through it multiple times. It's definitely one of my go-tos when I need something to play. I also really liked the second game. When it came out, I couldn't put it down. Admittedly, it isn't as good as the original Bioshock, though I really like it. By the time Infinite came out, I think I may have been burnt out on Bioshock. I bought it close to when it released, started it, then completely lost interest. Maybe it was the location the game takes place in. I don't know, I didn't get that far into it. I slightly remember encountering Elizabeth, but I can't be sure. I just had to look up her name because I couldn't remember it. Despite never really getting into Infinite, I own 5 copies of it. I have all the Bioshock collections that have been released for the home consoles, the PC version, and the original Xbox 360 release. Maybe I'll revisit it someday. I haven't played Bioshock in a while, so the timing seems about right. If there's one franchise I hold above all others, it's The Legend of Zelda. These games are some of the greatest and most beloved in the entirety of gaming. I've played and immersed myself into almost every Zelda title. That is, except for the original. I have no excuse either. As long as I can remember, I've had this game in my life. Some of my earliest memories are of watching my older brothers play it. I've tried to play it my entire life in every iteration it's come out on. Whether that was on the NES, Game Boy Advance, GameCube, Wii Virtual Console, the 3DS Virtual Console, the Wii U Virtual Console, NES Classic, and the Switch's online service. I've started it time and time again to no avail. I've never made it to the end. I might give it another go on the Zelda Game & Watch, but I'm not holding my breath that I will stick to it. One of the reasons I think I've given up so many times is because it's so open-ended and cryptic. Don't get me wrong, I like that it doesn't hold your hand, I absolutely love Breath of the Wild. I'm just not into burning every bush and bombing every wall. That's tedious, and I really don't want to spend my time doing that. I also don't really want to use a guide, but if I do play it, I probably will. I've concluded that I most likely won't beat the first Zelda, and I'm okay with that. There are plenty of Zelda games out there that are amazing. Just like all the other games on this list, maybe I'll revisit it sometime in the future. I have a pile of games I've started but never finished. These were just a few of them. There are so many others that I could add to the list. Some I should probably play, and others I'm okay with letting sit for a while. From all-time classics to games hardly anybody knows, the reasons as to why I haven't gotten around to finishing them range widely. From time constraints to general disinterest, maybe this next year will be the time that I take some of them on.